Yes, it is finally here. The end of the year 2023 Michigan State Sports Extravaganza Bonanza Hootenanny. And one day we'll have a proper name for this whole event. But hey, for now, we're going to look back at the best and some of the worst from the last year of Michigan State Sports. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you for either ending the year with us or starting this new year with us here at Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe to this show, this YouTube channel this podcast however you're listening to this thank you so very much and also hey locked on spartans at gmail.com if you ever want to reach out all right let's get into the mix with our guy our near dear friend of the program connor Muldowney of spartan avenue he joins us for this 2023 look at the best some of the worst but hey just a whole recap of the last year and a Show that actually goes so long that, well, it's not just this episode. We're going to have a few more segments in tomorrow's show as well. So stay tuned for that. But hey, until then, let's 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 get to our guy Connor and the rest of 2023. As we ring in the 2024 year, guys, we got to look back on 2023. And no one better to do that with than one Connor Muldowney of Spartan Shadows, Spartans Avenue, Spartans everything over there. Connor. How are you doing, man? First of all, before I ask my first question, how are you doing? I should be a good host. Are we doing okay over there? We're doing great. This is, you know, couldn't ask for more. It's a rainy December day, you know, nice yeah. and gloomy outside. Love it. Yeah. It's nice. No, but yeah. hey, it's always sunny in 85 in East Lansing. Kind of. Uh, Connor, this this was a year that had a lot of ups and, well, a, quite the handful of downs here. We're going to go through it all. Everything that happened in 2023, we're going to have categories, nominations. It's going to be, what I hope, a hoot and a half. But before we get to that, Connor, what is the number one lesson you learned in the year of our Lord, 2023, when it comes to Michigan State Athletics? Is there any big takeaway you had? Because I certainly have one, but I want to hear you bad first uh never get your hopes up okay <laughs> happy new year everyone that's <laughs> this yeah. is already going great this is already going good oh boy god just everyone's champagne champagne has just fallen flat now um all the balloons have popped and, uh, no 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 because i'm not too far off for yeah. my lesson as well mine is just never get comfortable Connor, oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. this is this is going back to the start of the year. You know, basketball team's looking okay. Okay, but then they're starting to fall apart at the end here. And, oh, my God, they look horrible against Ohio State in the Big Ten tournament. Great. But then, hey, you know what? Discomfort doesn't have to always be a negative thing. They surprise us in that first weekend. And then, oh, my God, the Kansas State game. And then the summer happens. And things are going okay there. First two football games. Oh, my God, going great. We just smashed Richmond. That's right. Suck at Spiders. And then, well, a... Uh, Fun little story comes out on ESPN and then USA Today on a fateful Saturday evening. And, well, well, Connor, you think it couldn't get any worse? And then, well, you saw the next few weeks after that because it somehow did get even worse on the field. But then, hey, the light at the end of the tunnel was Jonathan Smith. But in between all that, too, was the preseason top five basketball team. And we know how that year has started. And then, hey, once you think that it's over, we're going to go to the NIT. We're not even, not even going to host an NIT game. They, they smash the absolute daylights out of Baylor and things are looking like somewhat okay again. So it's once again, we are taught this time and time again, but this is just another iteration of this to never ever for a single second of your life, Connor, be comfortable with anything going on in your life. So that's, that's another great lesson I learned this year. I, I got one more for you and I think you'll appreciate do. it. Okay. Never schedule a podcast with Sheehan after a big game. That's Please a good schedule. rule. Sound for everyone. I, don't, I don't think we've had a good podcast. Like a positive one yeah. since, I don't know, pre, I don't even know. I don't know. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. The 2021 football season, did we ever talk on this show together? Maybe. Probably. 
Probably not, yeah. actually. I don't know. It's you know, it's probably after the Purdue game. <laughs> Very well could have just been after that. So, probably. yeah, whenever you see our two faces or you hear our two voices, um, <laughs> you know, something bad is coming. Yeah. Bad things have happened. Uh, but hey, you know what? We're going to look at some of the best in 2023. Now, we're also going to look at some of the worst of 2023 as well, because look, it's been a roller coaster of a year. We have to paint the picture with every color that has been given to our palette. But Connor, I, I do want to start this uh, 2023 end of the year extravaganza hoot nanny palooza. I don't know. I never have a name for this show. I do want to start it on a good note here. So, Connor, the first category for the 2023 awards is we're going to start with an easy one game of the year. Now, I'm not going to say, unfortunately, there's not a lot to pick from. I'm not going to do that. Again, we're going to, we're going to keep things positive, Connor, but. Do you have any nominees for your 2023 game of the year? I actually have four, oh, but, let's go. but none of them are football. Clearly. Wow. Okay. You know, I'm sorry. Richmond just missed the cut. Um, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, so I have the Marquette game in the NCAA tournament last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Nebraska regular season basketball last year at Nebraska. Okay. That was like a, that, I felt like that was like a turnaround type of situation. Baylor like game that. this year, which may have just saved the season. And then the only loss that I have on there is Kansas State. That game was just incredible. That was like <sighs> one of the best games I've ever watched. I'm still not there. Like, I, I look, I know it was a, a great game, but just like the 2011 Big Ten Championship game was a great game. It's an, an, like an all-time football game. We're 12 years removed from that game, and I, and I still can't bear myself to watch a single highlight of it. Like, I, I won't be able to watch a highlight of this Kansas State game probably. The rest of my life. Yeah. Um, but yes, by definition, that was certainly an incredible game. An incredible game. Um, Connor, I, I have two as well that you just named. The Marquette game, obviously. I also have the Baylor game as well. That was a, a certified party. Um, but also, yeah, I, I do have uh, just the two Power 5 football wins just because I, I had to put it on there just for my own sanity. Uh, the Indiana game. That's right. Thriller. Uh, that game, Thriller. Uh, essentially killed Tom Allen over there. And then, um, yeah, the, the Nebraska game as well. So I have those four games. I also did want to add the USC basketball game. And then there was one basketball game too. I just wanted to add just for the sake of adding it. It was a quite the opposite of the Kansas state game. This was actually a, a horrendous game, but it was a good outcome. It's when Michigan state beat Michigan at Breslin center. It, the score was like 21 to 19 or something like that. It, it moved the game of basketball back a few decades, but hey, anytime Michigan State wins against Michigan, like we're okay. gonna yeah. give a nod to that one. So those are my nominees. Um, hey, and again, uh, actually, not again. This is the first time I'm saying this. I'm sorry. Um, if anyone catches anything that we've missed, comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you want to reach out, locked on Spartans at gmail.com. But Connor, do you have a winner here for Michigan State game of the year? I think it's I think it's a tie between two. I think okay. I think Marquette has to be on there because we don't, you know, like that was arguably their best performance of that season. Oh, of course, yeah. And yeah. the Baylor game. I mean, the Baylor game. Honestly, we could look back at the Baylor game and be like, that is what like made them realize that they're actually a good basketball team. I don't want to be too prisoner of the moment, but I kind of agree with that. And yeah. maybe some of it is like a psychological issue that I just have to work out because the Marquette game was a fantastic game. Like yeah. that was great. It was a seven beat and a two, but it didn't even look like an upset. Michigan State just looked like the better team. But also like I, th this is what ties me up mentally, Connor, is that winning that game meant we got to go to the Kansas State game and our hearts got put through the wood chipper. Mm -hmm. There. So I'm not saying like I wish we lost the Marquette game, but man, winning that Marquette game, the grand prize was as hard of a kick in the you know what as you could ever ask for. And also, if you want to add this little cherry on top, beating Marquette was like kind of sort of the sole reason Michigan State went into this year top five with so many sky high expectations that have kind of sort of been dashed. I mean, look, we can see the bones of a good basketball team here, mm -hmm. but. Oh boy, that that Marquette game! It was a lot of fun in the moment. It was a blast, but oh my god, on the other side of that hill, was one of the most heartbreaking losses that you've seen as a Spartan fan, and also, well, a, a really, really high, really high expectation going into this year. So, the, the maybe, Baylor maybe game might be the most fun game I've watched as a Michigan State fan, and I don't know, like since Cassius, right? Like, I, it was unbelievable. There was nothing I mean, that went wrong. Nothing, nothing went wrong. 
the uh, the Stephen Izzo uh, doing hot potato oh. on the free throw line, but that <laughs> but the first like thirty nine minutes and ten seconds, yeah. see, Perfect. like there were ten highlight moments too. Like there were ten pop plays as well. Where oh, it was as swaggy of a victory as you could possibly have. It was so much fun. And like, okay, whenever Baylor had a big possession, where like, well, in the last few years, whenever another team has a big possession, okay, they kind of put some water on Michigan State's role they're on. But instead, like, Michigan State would just have a pick six. Okay, I'm going to hit Cohen Carr for a windmill dunk that he gathers at the free throw line. It's like, oh my God, everything is coming up. Yeah. Michigan State Spartans right now. This is great. So, is it prisoner of the moment to go with Baylor as our game of the year? I, maybe not. It's been that maybe bad not. of a year, honestly. I don't know. Yeah, we do have to kind of. But like the NCAA tournament games, you have to realize are so much bigger. And I think you're just afraid to to say Marquette because of the Kansas State. I know. I am. Because I have some mental issues I need to sort out on my end. (laughs) I think the majority would say that it's no doubt the Marquette game. And so, yeah, I'll I'll just go with the majority. I I don't want to cut against the green this early in our uh, 2023 MSU. uh, You you cut against all, all you want. No, nah, but I, I'll, I'll cut against some grains later on, maybe. Right, back with more categories here in a hot second. Just need to talk your ear off about Fan Duel Sportsbook. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with Fan Duel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that's right gang hey we talked about the old one where if you bet five dollars on the money line and your team wins you get 150 dollars in bonus bets well hey to kick off the year it's even sweeter because you get 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose with your five dollar bet this is the best time to get in on the action at FanDuel the app is super easy to use and there are so many different ways to bet like live same game parlays Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. The greatest props out there that you can find on your NFL Sundays, especially with playoffs creeping up, guys. You know I'll be whipping up a nice first-time touchdown score parlay on FanDuel, the greatest sports book in America. So what are you waiting for out there? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And hey, this could go on for a while because when me and Connor hop on, two things happen. The first one we already talked about, pure misery, usually happens. But the second, we ramble for a long time. So if we don't get to something today, that this could go over the next few episodes. Just a little programming note there. Uh, Connor, as an esteemed guest of the Locked on Spartans program, do you want to stay like on the brighter side of things? Or do you want to like water things down right now and kind of throw some ice on, on the mood right now and go to like a sad category? I feel like it's only right that we water down the mood a little bit. Okay. I feel like it's only right. It's only us. Now, now that, that's a very good point. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that's an incredible point. Um, this is something we've done for the, like the last anywhere from like one to six years. I can't remember how many times we've been doing this end of the year show, but this is always the most controversial category because there's a good handful of Spartan fans that are like, why are you rehashing all the bad stuff? And I get that. Believe me, it's a joyous time. It's the holidays and no one wants to look back on the bad for the most part. But look, again, we want to paint an honest picture of what happened this year. And you can't move forward after experiencing the bad moments without laughing or at least attempting to uh, at everything that has happened behind you. So we have a few of these kind of categories. Let's do this. Let's just cut right to the chase here. Let, let's go. Let's let's take this roller coaster all the way down, Connor. <laughs> Worst moment of the year. No okay. shortage of options. <laughs> I definitely have a few options there. Um, so, like I said, that the Kansas State game was one of the best games. I also think that the ending of the Kansas State game, where nobody wanted to shoot, was probably a top five worst mm-hmm. moment of the year. Maybe top three. Maybe top two. Honestly, like mm-hmm. just the hot potato at the end and the just not even having a chance. That's up yeah. there. Uh, yeah. The Michigan football loss, like. There was nothing okay. more demoralizing than just getting blanked at home sure. by Michigan. I mean, like, I'm sure most Michigan State fans didn't even watch the second half. Not no, the I smart didn't. ones. Not not the smart <laughs> ones, correct. The the mentally healthy ones. No, yeah. there's no shot they watched that, right? Yeah. And the third one, I have, I have a prop for the third one. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know if you can see <laughs> that. 
I would say I would it's say a lovely Tuck there. Cummins shirt for all those listening yeah. to the podcast. He just showed a Tuck Cummins shirt, which yeah. you can get on sale for one dollar ninety nine cents at your local sports retailer. Yep. <laughs> I'm willing to give it away to one lucky fan who who retweets the podcast. Honestly, wow, wow. Yeah. It, but you guys have to pay for shipping. That's the only deal. Okay. Yeah. yeah no problem. Yeah. That's a that, that's a financial loss. But yeah. hey, the memory uh, is a gain. So that's, that's, all that's only one of three uh, Mel Tucker shirts that I own. So uh, yeah, if oh. anybody who wants them, just just shoot me a DM and they're coming to you. <sighs> that's tough. That's, that's yeah. Tough. Yeah. So <laughs> I, would, I would say that's probably, but it, but it led to something good, honestly. So I can't really say it's a right it's an embarrassing moment because in the in, at the time you were just like right really but um yeah i would say the u of m loss ending of kansas state are probably top two for me so my nominees for this category uh is the iowa game go ahead and pick yours either sport either one that happened in iowa uh the football game which you know we had in our clutches and then well it was the first iteration of Harlan and the boys just <laughs> doing what they did best and snatching defeat from the jaws of victory anyway. So, and of course, well, the basketball game where, look, I jinx things all the time. That's not a secret. We'll get to this in a different category, but I had a celebratory video with a minute to go when we were up, what was it, 36 points, Connor? And then I was shot the lights out. I, I'm just so depressed just rehashing that. Anyway, another nominee I have is, hey, remember when it was like 11.59 p.m. of the spring transfer portal window? And, hey, all right, well, we made it out okay. Uh-oh, wait, is that Keon Coleman and our starting quarterback Peyton Thorne leaving to go somewhere else? Uh-oh, that, that was a bad feeling, Connor. If I can elaborate on this a little bit. I was on vacation with my lovely wife. We did a little uh, baby moon away from the older kid. It was great. We were going to enjoy a nice three-day vacation. Wasn't going to do anything with the podcast. And then at one in the morning, I got a message that, hey, Keon Coleman's entering the transfer portal tomorrow. It's like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go walk in the ocean right now and never come back. Uh, you, you, you guys be well. So that was a nice little timing aspect there for me. Um, also, the penalty after that punt against Rutgers because, Connor, as Michigan State fans, we all knew what was coming next. We knew that the second punt wasn't going to go well. And we knew that after the second punt didn't go well, that, well, things were really going to snowball out of control because, again, if, if there's one thing the football team did good, it was really letting the stakes compound on top of each other, and we we all saw the avalanche. That was coming. Um, no really, really shocking because we usually have such great special teams. I don't know. It's just... I have a new category to introduce after this, and it's man that should go to prison, uh, person of the year, and it's just Ross Ells. So that's <laughs> just the category and the winner yeah. right there. Um, my two that I've tied for first, this is kind of on top of your Michigan game, 49-0. to zero. I want to add the Ohio State game and the Penn State game, mm -hmm. not even the outcomes of them, though, Connor. This is what I mean from worst moment of the year. For as long as time stands, and I think a lot of Michigan State fans are like this as well, no matter if the Spartans are playing Three Rivers High School, I can get freaked out for that game. I, I can work myself into getting scared for that game as easily as I can envision a path to victory if Michigan State were to play against, say, the San Francisco 49ers or the Baltimore Ravens. Like the day before or the day of the game, if the Bills are on the schedule, I can talk myself into a roadmap. And I get that anxious feeling in the stomach. You know, We all get that before kickoff, mm -hmm. except for those three games, Connor. Like the, it was such a low moment this year that you go into the Michigan game, the Ohio State game, the Penn State game, and I like I wasn't even like nervous, anxious, or worried, and that sucks because you only get twelve of those moments a year. Thirteen if you make a bowl game. Hey, Big Ten championship, even more. But still, it's a finite number of games where you can get worked up, you know, feel the emotions. Didn't even have them for those three games. Like that's that's how in the gutter things were, at least on my end. I'm sure I speak for a few other state fans. We talked about the state fans that probably didn't even watch the second half of the Michigan game, but just walking into Ford Field for that Penn State game and not even, like, thinking that, like, hey, we could walk out of here happy, like, that that, that just sucked, Connor. That just it, sucked. <laughs> it, well, it did suck, but, like, at the same time, I like you said, we knew what was going to happen. So, like, right. at the Ford Field game, it was just, like, you know, you know, like when you go to a Tigers game, you're not there for the Tigers. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're just there mm -hmm. for the vibes and you're there for yep. having fun. So yep. that was the yep. only positive takeaway from any of those games was that like the Ford Field one actually allowed us to escape. kick back and relax. Yeah, yeah. Just, just chill. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> to see how bad it was going to be. Um, and also, uh, th this is going to be a lot shorter of an explanation, but uh, it's specifically this moment in the Kansas State game when I believe, who's the three foot eight guard? Was it Marquise Noel? Was that his name? Yeah. yeah. When he left injured, came back, and then hit that bank shot three pointer, I knew that this was going to be one of the hardest losses that we've ever absorbed as Michigan State fans. Because also, Connor, look, we, we've been on a fair share of the right side of just great victories, miraculous victories. Hmm. But, Connor, that night it felt like that we were rooting for the villain in a Disney movie. And because Kansas State was just the uh, the hero in it all. They had the undersized guard that plays with a big heart playing in his hometown in New York City, hitting these miraculous shots. Like what, when he hit that bank shot three, like, I'm not going to say I'm Mr. Know-it-all over here, but in that moment, I knew where things were heading. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of game left, but we we we, we knew what was going to happen, yeah. Connor. That was not going to end well, and it uh, it didn't. It didn't. So I don't I don't remember the last parts of the game. So lucky you, lucky you. <laughs> so Connor, for the worst moment of the year, do you have a winner? Which is probably really our loser, but do you have a do you have a winner for that one, Connor? <laughs> I. I feel like the, the Kansas State game was just like having our hearts ripped out. Like the ending cool. of that game and <laughs> like terrible. that bank shot too. Like just terrible. that whole, like we had them and then we let it slip away and then we didn't even have a chance to win it in the end when we had the ball. I don't know. That would be my pick, the, the ending of the Kansas State game, but. That's mine as well. That's yeah. mine as well. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> All right. Let's no. Let's pick things up. Let's We're pick things up. Let's... Watching when, when I'm on. That's that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, who could say no to this dashing face? Come on, Connor. You're you're fine. Mm -hmm. Um, let's do play of the year. Let's do play of the year. All right, how does that sound? Because I have three written down, but if you want to bat first, roll out your nominees for play of the year. You go first because I couldn't think of any other but one, and it's not even good. So it's up to you. Oh my God, this is so depressing. Jesus, 2024 has really got to bring the cream to the top, right? <laughs> oh man, uh, I got two football ones to kick things off. Uh, the Malik Carr, Michigan State legend, Spartan dog for life, uh, Malik Carr. Uh, his touchdown against Nebraska, where he catches the ball and a guy tries to tackle him. It, what, was that Nebraska or was that Indiana? Indiana. It was Indiana. Indiana. Oh Jesus, not, you're two from Indiana. I'm there guessing. we go. Okay. So, and then the other one, the Montori Foster touchdown catch against Indiana as well. So, yes, we are using two touchdowns from the same game down in Bloomington. And then the last one I have, Connor, uh, you be the judge here. This isn't really a play at all, but it was a, I'm going to call it a snowy night in Nebraska. The basketball team mm. is taking on the Huskers in not a must-win game, but a if you win this, this would be a really nice game, and we could all stop freaking out if this team's going to make the tournament or not. And Tyson Walker goes up to Kasai Tominaga and says, shut the F up. Who has any idea what Tominaga said? He could have complimented Tyson Walker on what he did on the other end. He could have started trash talking. Whatever it was, he turned around and very calmly just said, shut the F up. Now that started a snowball where Tyson Walker scored 19 points and Michigan State, despite being down 12 points at halftime, roared back and won the second half 54 to 29 for a 80 to 67 victory. So just that little moment between Mr. Walker and Mr. Tominaga, I, that, that just might be my play of the year because that that really started to put the hatchet in, in Nebraska that game. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, I was thinking about that exact thing too. I was like, Something about that Nebraska game sticks out in my mind as being I know. Like really, I know. it was really fun. Like the whole second half was just like, okay, okay, like this is who they are. Yeah. But I do remember that specific moment where it's like you play, it's played in slow motion all the time. It's just like, yeah. But like also, Tominaga is like one of the most annoying players of all time. So <laughs> I think, I think that might have been deserved. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, for, I, I, I agree with the Montori Foster. I completely blocked that from my memory. I, I just assumed mm -hmm. football didn't happen this year. Fair. Um, That's fair. Yeah. So I completely forgot about that. But that play, if I was to pick a football play, that would easily be it. Um, it's just okay. like a freakish play. That was very Aaron Burbridge-esque. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. You know. So I would say that for football. And then my basketball one, like, I had a hard time coming up with. Because I was thinking of the, the Kansas State game. I was like, I mean, you could pick, like, one of Aiken's, like, threes or, you know, Hogarth <sighs> yeah. driving to the lane. or and, and then the Marquette game, like. Tyson Walker dunked. That was kind of cool. That was like that was neat. Yeah, yeah. That was like the the cherry on top. Um, 
I don't know. So I thought of the Baylor game this year, and I was like, you know, the one game that I had the most fun in, the play of the year, Cohen Carr's windmill. Like, yes. I don't yes. think I've jumped out of my seat faster over a dunk or a play in years. Mm-hmm. And, like, that just ignited the crowd. Like, everybody was just, like, having fun. I don't know. That was – that That would be mine. It's, it's kind of lame because it wasn't really meaningful, but – Oh, no, that's not lame. No, because that was everything that we were promised with Cohen Carr, too. Yeah. Just, like, freak NBA-style dunks. And that's what he got in the space between the free throw line <laughs> and the hoop. Like, it was unbelievable. Can I add one more to that? One more that actually almost put me in a body cast. Um, it's when, in that game, the Baylor game, Tyson Walker got switched on Baylor's big. And I'm screaming from the upper deck. And we had first row in the upper deck seats for this. And this is important here. I was screaming – uh, cook him. It, it was much more profane than that, but I was hysterical just screaming, cook him. And he did. He hit the three-pointer and he cooked him. Connor, I, I got the wobbles. I almost went over the railing uh, in, in the upper deck and landed in the suite right below us. I had to catch myself like on the glass right in front of us. But I there was a, a th- we were about this close, two inches away from me broadcasting live from a hospital room still as I'm in a body cast because I I did not act like uh, we've been there before. I lost my ever loving mind after he buried that three pointer. So um, just want to add that one as well. That was more of a personal, selfish story, but yeah, I, I that, feel like putting you in in the first row over a railing at any sporting event would just. I feel like yeah. that's already like on the do not yeah do not do list. We we learned a good lesson that day. Yeah, yeah. maybe do the second row instead of the, of the first still row. Too but, close, uh, I think you you it got uh, you it got lost nice. yourself. I don't know. There's just a whole. Well, also, too, at Little Caesars Arena, if you're in the upper deck, like oh, yeah. you're sitting on a wall. Like yeah. it is so steep up there. If you're in the 10th row and you just lean forward, you could stumble onto the court. So I, it's uh, it's it's dangerous up there. I was first row upper deck, too. So, like, I was. Look at that. Yeah, we Look were probably that. like right next to each other. I didn't even know it. But I was. Like, you know what? Yeah. Just pumping shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> looking straight down. Like, I, I, you, yeah, you would not. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. You know what? I'm going to go with one of your nominees for my winner. I'm going to go with that Cohen Card dunk, actually. Okay. I, I am. That's, that's what I'm going to name as, as the winner here. I, I like that nomination a lot. So that's that, I didn't think that was going to win. All right, I'll take it. There we go. Bang. Uh, I got uh, – let's do two quick categories here. The, the first one is recruiting moment of the year. I only have one written down. I don't know if you have any written down, but uh, I do have one written down for recruiting moment of the year. All right, let's hear it. Okay. Nick Marsh committed to Michigan State, specifically the second time. I believe it was in July, and this is another story time with Matt I could just rifle through if I can make the show any more about myself right now. But, hey, we're just here to reminisce on a fun year. Um, we were, you know, enjoying a nice summer day. Uh, we were by the pool, and my kid said, hey, come swim with me. I'm like, yes, I will. Hold on. But Nick Marsh is committing at 5. I see to hit publish. We all knew it was going to happen. But it just has to be official before I hit publish. And then five minutes goes. 10 minutes goes, 15 minutes goes, and he still hasn't committed. And my kid's like, well, can you, let's, let's go swim. I'm like, you know what? Fine. Sam, my lovely wife, can you watch this high school commitment and tell me when he commits? Now my wife, sure. She'll watch Michigan state, but that's more so just to make sure that, you know, my mental health aligns with things going on the television screen. She's a state fan just by marriage. If, if I get hit by a Mack truck tomorrow, I don't know if a state game will ever reach our television ever again. Like she doesn't really care, but here she is watching this, like, what turned out to be, like, a (laughs) 45-minute recruiting ceremony for one Nick Marsh. But dang it, at the end, he recommitted to Michigan State. So, uh, And even after all that, too, with the coaching change in the fall, of course, it's just for me keeping Nick Marsh's commitment because I truly believe that this is a future NFL player we're about to watch in East Lansing. So it's Nick Marsh, but specifically just the roadmap it took to his commitment uh, during, during the year. I, I also have – I have keeping Nick Marsh on there. So, like, yeah. obviously after Tucker was hi- fired, I was like, he's probably gone again. So, I think Jonathan Smith did a really good job of getting him and his mom to buy in. Yeah. Um, so, that was one of mine. Like, keeping Nick Marsh was huge. Um, I have two other ones. One okay. is a tie between landing uh, – I think Kurtang committed last year, right? Like, it was 2023. Oh. I believe you are correct. Yes, okay. I can him check and that, but yes. Jace Richardson committing are tied for like one spot, and then landing Aiden Childs has to be has to be up there. 
Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. That's a great one. Uh, he did commit in April, by the way. Kurt Tang did commit okay. April 3rd, 2023. So you are correct on that one. But yeah, also, yeah, the Jace Richardson one was nice too because that was in the middle of, uh, of the year where things were just not going Michigan State's yeah. way at all whatsoever. And all the rivals predictions said that he was going to pick Michigan State. The 24-7 sport crystal ball said he was going to pick Michigan State. But when he actually made it official on ESPN2 that day, Oh God, I threw a fist bump so hard that I thought my shoulder was going to fly out of my body. It was, it, it was just, cause we, we just needed some good news Yeah, and we got it through Jace Richardson. So that was, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I, I think that's just like a default basketball one just could be because sure. All the great basketball moments happened last cycle. Like the really, like the, Oh the sure. Yeah, cars, the Xavier Booker, Jeremy, yeah. Fears, like all those were like back to back to back in 2022. So Excellent. Um, you got to give basketball one. So but I, I, I think I'm with you on the Nick Marsh thing for sure. I'm going to have to go with Nick Marsh as well. And the other quick category I have now, this was a really random one. I just had a karma moment of the year. Really, Connor, this was just a way for me to just rehash the time where <laughs> Rutgers had coach Steve Peichel. Uh, he had the chance to help Michigan State out because they had to cancel their Minnesota game because of the shooting that happened last year. All right, for Michigan State to be able to reschedule that game against Minnesota, Rutgers would have to move a game around, but they did not. Now, two things can be true, I think, and I defended Pykel, actually, and I still will right now because, hey, don't do anything that's going to put you at risk of losing. That would have given them a lot of games in a short amount of days where things were starting to spiral out of control on their year. Okay, that can be true. The second part of this can also be true as well is that you are a massive P-R-I-C, you know what, for not helping out Michigan State in this circumstance to get another game on the schedule. So, Connor, well, yes, you got to protect your own program. You got to do what's right for your team in the end. That was very karmatic to see Peichel and Rutgers ultimately miss the NCAA tournament at the end of the year uh, after that whole charade that they pulled. So, again, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but at the very end of the day, that was karma. Pike, yep. that was karma yeah yeah that, that was i mean you hated to see it you know oh, it made you sick. Hated to see it. sick to your stomach it was horrible so <laughs> I, I i can't imagine you you can't have a nomination this is so random of a, of a category i, I, do. So, you know. I do oh my god wow okay you have a karma moment of the year it's wow. very it's very uh petty of me i would say but okay um it's it's also recent it might be prisoner of the moment karma moment of the year we'll see so I said Oregon State fans trashing MSU only to lose Aiden Childs, mm. Rustin Young, half the coaching staff, and countless <laughs> other players and recruits. I <laughs> felt bad for most Oregon State fans. However, like the really loud ones on Twitter, oh. um, I don't I don't feel bad for a second. No. And that's how it usually works. You know, the vocal minority is the one that gets under your skin, but for those guys, uh, no, I don't feel bad whatsoever. So yeah, we'll take all your good players yeah. and your good recruits as well. Yeah. And your coach and your other coaches. Yeah. And, and those two, you know what? Yeah. Your recruiting director, yeah, your chief of staff will take him <laughs> as well. And yep. you know what? We're going to call ourselves the Michigan state beavers too. If you really feel like it, we'll get back to you on that to see if that's uh, the kind of mood we're in, but yeah, we'll, yep. we'll see.